Hi, my name is Richard Duffy and I am the Acumatica Product Evangelist and what I'd like to do in this session is show you how quick and easy it is to actually install uh, the Acumatica application onto uh, a server. Now in this particular instance I'm going to follow exactly the same process that you would go through if you were installing onto a server but right now I'm going to install my own development environment. So I am going to be using Windows 8.1 and I have already installed IIS version 8 and I've got SQL Server 2014 also installed on my machine. So the process is going to be exactly the same, just if you're looking at this uh, and some things pop up which look like it's Windows 8, well that's exactly why. So the first thing I need to do is I need to download the Acumatica ERP files and there's three files that I need. I want the framework installer, I want the ERP installer and the report designer installer. Now when I go ahead and I run the Acumatica ERP installer, by default it's going to ask me if I want to incorporate some of these other components. But you can download them separately uh, and download them onto a standalone PC for your development work. So let's go ahead now and I'm going to just double click and run the Acumatica ERP installed on MSI. Let's bring that up into the center of our screen and you can see it's basically going to walk you through the steps. So I'll say next, yes I do agree to the, um, the user agreement and of course uh, you may want to scroll through that and read that just to make sure that you have uh, kept uh, this in mind as you go through the installation process and you're working with the software. Now important to note that demonstration accounts and beta accounts are not included in our support. So let's say for example you might be a student or somebody learning Acumatica. Your deployment in a demo or trial mode is not covered by support. But I will give you access to a particular email account that you can use if you wish to uh, get support on your Acumatica deployment and we'll do our best to help you out as you go through that process. So I'll say next and then it's going to ask me well, what do you want to do? You want to launch the configuration wizard after the install is done and we always recommend that you do that. Do you want to install the report designer? Because it's important to note that the report designer does install on your local PC. Alright, so you do want to uh, you do want to have that component installed. And I'm going to go ahead and install my debugger tools which will enable me to work uh, and effectively debug any code I'm writing with the Acumatica framework. So I'll then say next. It's going to ask me, well specifically where do you want to put this? Now I've got a RAID drive which is my drive I. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put my files there because my C drive is running a little bit low on space. So I'll say OK to that and then I say next and it's going to pop up and ask me to, um, to validate that the installation is allowed to go ahead and we're going to let that run. So we'll give that a couple of seconds. Now just as an FYI in case you're wondering, uh, the machine that I'm currently running is a uh, 12 core workstation and it has 32 gigabytes of RAM in it. That's kind of the, the, the sort of machine that you'd really want to be running if you want to do localized development, have your own local Acumatica ERP instance installed and so on. Of course the advantage of this kind of machine with Windows 8.1 is that you can actually install the Hyper-V role and you can set up a number of different virtual machines as well if you want to and then you can have those virtual machines available for you as your uh, development or demonstration environments. But for me, I'm going to be doing a lot of work, so I'm just doing this standard install under Windows 8.1. Now, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, I don't think I did now that I think of it, but I am installing Acumatica 4.2, which is the very latest version of the software. So you should always make sure that from a development perspective that you are running the very latest version of the software. So again it's running in the background and now you can see it's going to ask me to run the configuration wizard. So let's just move this up here into the center of the screen. So what it's asking me to do right now, it's asking me which of these four things do I want to do? Do I want to deploy a new instance? Do I want to perform some application database maintenance? Do I want to just upgrade uh, an existing deployment of the Acumatica application with this new version or am I deploying onto Microsoft's Azure platform and if I'm going to do that I'll want to generate an Azure configuration file but 
What I want to do right now is I want to go ahead and I want to deploy a new application instance. So the very first thing it's going to ask me to do is going to ask me to connect to my database server. So it's going to say, okay, so which specific SQL server do you want to connect to? So I actually have a local one and that's the name of my local machine. Do you want to use Windows authentication or SQL authentication? Now, I always like to use SQL authentication because it gives me a lot more control over exactly what I'm doing at the SQL server level. So I'll log in as SA and then I'll put in the password that I used when I created my database. And I'll say next. All right, so now it's gonna ask me, do you wanna create a new database or do you wanna to connect to an existing one? I'm gonna create a new database and I'm just gonna let it default to Acumatica DB and then I'll say next. Now, next step is to do your company setup and you can have as many different companies on this database instance as you like, but what I wanna do is I want to specify, well, when this company is created, do I want it to be empty? Do I want to use a demo data set or do I want to use a template? So right now, I want to create a demo data set because that's the best way to start off if you're wanting to learn the Acumatica application. And then I've got my additional information in here. Is this visible? What's the parent company ID? And as you go through your Acumatica training, you'll understand how these company IDs work and, and how that needs to uh, be configured. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave that as it is. Now, one of the things that you can do is you can go in here into your advanced settings, okay, and you can come in here and start doing a little bit more um, detailed configuration if you wanna override some of these values. Uh, and you can secure the company on the login form as well. So that's just gonna add a an extra layer of, con of security for you during the login process. But because this is running on my local PC, I'm not really too worried about that. So the next step is I'm gonna say next, and it's just gonna ask me what login do I wanna use to connect to um, the Acumatica ERP system. Now, I can let Acumatica create a new login or I can use an existing login and it's up to you how you do this but I would not recommend in this particular instance that you use the SA account so you really want to use an account here that's got a limited set of permissions. If you have created an existing account and you want to use that you need to make sure that it has at least read, write, execute and this admin permission. Alright so we're going to let it create a new login and we'll say next. Oh, and it's saying, hey, your login is empty. So let's go in and we'll give it a name. So I'm going to call this, this is going to be my, let's call it AccuAdmin just for the sake of the exercise. And I'm going to give it a password. Of course, we want to use a strong password. And it's always a good idea to write these down. So then I'll say next. Okay, so that's where it's gonna go. Now it's gonna also ask me, do I wanna create a portal? Because one of the things that you can do with Acumatica, of course, is not only can you create the core application, but you can also create a portal, which is an area where your suppliers, your customers, uh, employees can come in and access a subset of the core Acumatica functionality. So I'm gonna allow it to do that. So I'm gonna click on Create Portal. And then I'm gonna say next. All right, so now, what I wanted to do is show you what you need to make sure is that you've done all of the right configuration first in your system. Now the configuration wizard's gonna double check for you if the, conf if the required com components are installed. And you can see that the application development and common HTTP features are not correctly installed. So I can say okay. Now what I'm able to do from here is I can go back, I can go into the control panel, I can go into my administration tools, or sorry, I can go into my programs and features, I can go in and turn my Windows features on or off, and then I can come in here and I can set up exactly how I want uh, the system to work. So let's go in and let's make sure that in my Internet Explorer, I've got all of the right settings installed. So what I want to do is I want my .NET extensibility. I want, well actually I won't go through these one by one, I'm just going to go ahead and install the ones that I need. And 
Uh, what else do I want? Uh, that's pretty much it. So you'll need to make sure that at the bare minimum you have these .NET components installed. But if you if you get it wrong, if you make a mistake and you you forget certain components, right? Um, let's say for example you wanted to have WebDAV publishing enabled. Well, you can come back in here and switch that on. HTTP redirection and so on. Uh, you can come back in as many times as you like and the Acumatica installer is going to double check for you that you've done what you need to do. So let's switch on our uh, security, let's switch on our basic authentication, our SSL support. I also want to switch on my digest authentication and I want to switch on my Windows authentication as well. So, you know, again, it's really a case of make, making sure that you've got these things done correctly and effectively before you start. So then I'll say OK, and we'll let uh, Windows apply those changes for me. And you can now see those requested changes are completed. So if I go back into my Acumatica configuration wizard, and there it is, I'll say Next. All right, so I've now got the correct settings, I've now got the correct components, and that has gone ahead and has, has, uh, has installed correctly. So there's a couple of different options I can do. I can create a new application pool for my, uh, for my Acumatica deployment. I can also specify which website that I want my Acumatica deployment to run from. So with IIS, if I've got multiple websites, I can pick the one that I want. And of course, I can also create my virtual directory. So the easiest thing to do here from a development perspective is to just go ahead and accept all of the defaults. So I'm going to do that and I'll say next and there it is. There's all the information that I've got about my configuration. Now here's the best practice. I always like to save my configurations and this will save this as uh, a XML file for me. So I'm just going to save that in the default directory so I can come back and I can view that at any point in time and see exactly what I did when I ran the installation. So now I'll say finish and the Acumatica installation is now going ahead. So it's going to create the databases, it's going to deploy the website for me, it's going to load up all of my default data and then I'm basically ready to go. So rather than having it sitting here recording this process going through step by step, I'm just going to hit the pause button until the, uh, until the installation is ready to move on to the next stage. Now the next thing you're going to see is you're going to see this processing data bulk copy and that's because I've told the system that I want to have a demo database set up. So you'll see all of this information is being brought into the system. Now of course the amount of time that this takes is going to be purely dependent on you know exactly how fast your underlying machine is. Again that's the reason why I always suggest make sure you've got a machine with a reasonable amount of power uh, if you are going to be doing um, heavy duty development. And so now you can see the installation is complete so I'll just go ahead and I'll click on OK and then um, you've got these other options there that are, will be available for you later if you need them and you can always go and relaunch the ERP configuration wizard at any particular point in time. So let's just close that down now and what we want to do is we want to go ahead and we want to open up Acumatica for the very first time. Now there's a couple of ways you can do that. The quickest and easiest way of doing it is to go ahead and open up a web browser. So let's do that right now. So I'm going to open up a new um, Internet Explorer session. So there we have it and I'll go in and remember we install this on our local machine so it's going to be on local host and the website name was Acumatica ERP. So if I just go in here and I put in local host slash Acumatica ERP and you'll get your default login screen so that comes up so you, now you know you're ready to go. Now a couple of other things that you can do if you want to is you can go into your control panel and you can go into your administrative tools and if you go and you open up your IIS manager and inside IIS if you expand that out, if you look at your sites, open up your default website and there you'll see there's your Acumatica ERP 
And of course, you can go across here and just click on Browse and that will open up um, Acumatica for you. And this screen will change each time you open up, just to give you a little bit of variety. The other thing you can also do is go and just take a look at um, SQL Server and you'll see also that you now have on your local machine, you now have an Acumatica DB and you can see all of the tables that have been created there uh, inside the database. So you know the entire system is now set up for you. And the next thing you can do is you can go ahead and you can install the uh, Acumatica framework as well for doing some development. But we'll leave that for another session. Uh, that brings us to a close. So now, what have we done? I've taken you through the process of installing the core Acumatica ERP components. If you've got any questions, please feel free to leave a comment against this video or reach out to me. My email address is rduffy at acumatica.com. Thanks very much.